In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can earn automated money on Amazon FBA or how to automate your Amazon FBA business. Now, this is your first time to the channel. Welcome. Consider subscribing. My name is Bashar Ketu and I am the founder of BJK University, which is a company on a mission to impact 1 million lives by simply providing alternative to um, traditional education. Now, with that said, when, when I first started my Amazon business in 2015, um, I had just lost my restaurant to a fire and I was $150,000 in debt. And you see, coming online, and I still remember my very first sale with Amazon, um, it was just almost mind boggling to me, the fact that I could be sitting in my house and generate a sale without me interacting with a customer. And the reason why that was so almost um, you know, unreal for me, because right before that, in order for me to have made a sale in my restaurant business, I had to go shopping for the food. I, you know, we had to clean the food, prep it, serve it to the customer, clean it after the customer. And oftentimes three to five people were involved in every single transaction, you know, uh, to order a beer and a sandwich that were, that, you know, made the company about $10, uh, where our profit was maybe a dollar fifty two dollars Again, all that uh, preparation had to go in place. Where with Amazon, if you found a product, you could like literally from where I'm sitting right here, or you're, you're, you know, obviously for you, where you are sitting, you could simply be making money without having to touch the product physically, having to talk to anyone, having to really do any of that work. Now, I don't want to make this sound like it is easy to do, right? And, and, and by any means, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's easy or tell you guys that, you know, with, with a couple hundred dollars and maybe five minutes a day, you can make millions of dollars. That's not what this video is about. It is, a, it is hard work, it's a lot of hours, you need to invest thousands of dollars, and you need to have the right platform and the right blueprint to really succeed. However, it is a lot simpler than a lot of businesses out there, especially your traditional uh, businesses, like a you know, convenience store, or like a restaurant, or like you know, any other traditional businesses that maybe our parents or grandparents operated or worked at, right? So I just want to walk you guys through how you can automate your Amazon business and then kind of how I did it and then obviously how you can do it as well. Again, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to make an announcement. So it would be awesome if you do actually do stick around until the end of this video because I think you will enjoy that announcement. So with that said, um, you know, when I first started, um, I got to a point where I was scaling my business, but then it started becoming a lot of work. I was putting in 8, 10, 12, 15 hours every single day. And although I was fine with it because I was doing it from my home, I realized that there was a bottleneck, that there was something that was kind of like, you know, pushing down on me and that I couldn't scale. And it looked like there should have been another better way to scale. And that's when I realized the power of team. And that's when I really started investing in delegating and it started investing in finding um, you know people that are invested in my business that want to do my you know that want me to do good right and so I started the process of hiring and that I still remember the very first task that was just daunting and it just took a long time was product research because that was one task that obviously it's the the probably the biggest bottleneck in your business uh, because it takes the longest and it's the most um, important, right? And then the second thing, the second reason is because, um, you know, uh, uh, um, it's complicated and you need different strategies to doing product research, right? But so what I had to do, one important thing that I had, one important decision that I had to make in my business at that point was which of the tasks do I delegate? Because when you're first starting out, you're doing everything, right? You're a one man show. Uh, for Amazon, you're doing product research, you're, you know, uh, uh, contacting suppliers, you're doing all these things, right? And then if you want to keep scaling, and that would probably be at the ten to $20,000 a month level, that's when you should probably start, you know, looking to start delegating some of your tasks and start bringing on people, maybe one person that's part-time. Once you get to that thirty to $50,000 a month mark, you should have one person at minimum full-time. If you're at $100,000 a month, that's when you should have two to three people full-time minimum. Otherwise, you're gonna be working 10, 15 hours every single day, five to seven days a week, right? And you don't have to. For a, a not very much an expense, you could actually have people working for you that are very um, committed to your business and that are very knowledgeable. And in fact, 
many of them will have more knowledge than you. And, and honestly, this is how I also was able to expand my Amazon business and my, um, I guess my uh, knowledge was because I started bringing experts that know how to optimize PPC campaigns, how to find better products, how to do better negotiations than me because they had been doing it many, many times over and over and working with other clients. So the very first thing they want to do is you want to identify what are the tasks in your business that are easily duplicated that you know anyone can do, right? And so you should make a list. Usually what I like to do is I like to you know, open a sheet and then do top priority, mid priority, and then low priority. And then you want to start delegating the middle priority and the low priority over first. And then you start delegating the top priority. Top priority should be things that you should be doing up until about thirty dollars to $50,000 a month. And then at that point, that's when you should really have even the top priority things being delegated. At fifty dollars to $100,000 a month, this is when you should be not running the business, but more of a council, right? Like right now, I am not the person running my day-to-day -day operations anymore. I am more of a council. I meet with my team once per week. They bring me the issues. I give them advice. And they go in and, you know, we talk about decision making and a little by little, you also want your team to start actually making decisions on their own, right? So the middle tier and the bottom tier um, activities could be things like contacting suppliers, could be things like, um, you know, uh, filling out spreadsheets, could be things like tracking sales, could be things like running reports, could be things like, um, you know, uh, um, uh, talking to your photographers, uh, could be also things like, um, uh, you know, um, uh, creating like an ebook for your product, getting samples, all that stuff. Middle tier, which is the, the thing in the middle would be creating your listing, would be optimizing your listing, would be launching your PPC campaigns, optimizing your PPC campaigns, but obviously you need to have some type of SOPs. Uh, start standard operating procedures in place so that way they can follow so that way everyone is doing the same thing exactly the same whether if you're doing it or if they are doing it right and uh, photography you should be outsourcing photography you should be outsourcing uh, um, you know listing creation and those could be vendors they don't even need to be hired in-house right so they don't even need to be and, and that's kind of what I started with is I started with outsourcing creating a listing because other people were able to create better listings and optimize them better than I could. Photography, I never did photography, right? So that would be the first thing you want to delegate, right? And then little by little, you want to bring on someone part-time that starts putting all these pieces together into your business. And then the last year would be launching, optimizing your campaigns and product research and, and product differentiations, looking for product ideas, how to differentiate this product, what can we do to generate more revenue, what can we do to scale the business? Those would be the top priority things that at 50,000 or above, you should start delegating those. And that's when you should have at least one or two people full-time in your business that you can depend on. And those people could be virtual. They could be all over the world. There are people overseas that are very intelligent, that are very knowledgeable, that can help you scale your business. Because if you try to control everything, you will control nothing. And in order for you to scale your business, in order for you to keep uh, progressing, you need to make sure that you empower your team. You need to make sure that you, you know, give them leverage. I would even give them a stake in my business. Right now, my Amazon business, I do not own a uh, um, uh, uh, full percentage of. Uh, the, the most I own in an Amazon business is 75%. I have multiple Amazon businesses where I only own 30 or 40% because I have now invested in operators that I know that those operators are great. And then what I've done is I've just simply invested money in those businesses. They operate the business. We meet once a month for 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. I give them advice. We look at the numbers. We look at the projections, where we're going, and that's it. And then the next thing is, you know, other businesses where I own 75%, it's that those were my original uh, accounts where I grew myself and then I brought on team and then now it's completely delegated. Again, we meet once a week. They do everything. They do, you know, I, the only thing I do is they bring me product ideas. I sift through them. They give me ideas what they want. And it's, again, I'm just a counsel. I'm not the person running the business day to day. Now, one thing to make very clear is that you're not going to start there, right? When I first started the first two years, I was running my business Every single day by myself, I was doing everything. The only thing I outsourced was photography. And then I started outsourcing product listing, which you could get someone to do them for a hundred to $200 photography, anywhere between three to $500. You can have someone do them for you, but those are just one-time costs for each product. Right. And then it started 
hey, I need products because now I have a system and it works and it grows. I need more products. So I started outsourcing products. And then I was like, all right, well, maybe I should bring in someone in house so they can put all these pieces because I was still talking to the person doing the listing. I was still talking to the person doing the photography. I was still talking to this person, the suppliers. So what I did is I started firing myself up and that's what you want to do in your business. You want to keep firing yourself up, right? And then you have someone putting everything together. I started with one person part-time and then that person became full-time and then a second person part-time and then that person became full-time and so on and so forth. But again, do understand you're not going to start there, right? You're going to start with doing everything and you want to do everything in the beginning. That's very important for you because you want to learn exactly how everything is done first. So that way, when you go to delegate things and say, they come to you and say, well, this is not possible in three hours. You say, look, I was able to get it done in an hour and a half. I'm giving you three hours because I'm just thinking that maybe you're busy and you're not as focused as I am, right? So you want to make sure that you know everything in your business and that you put yourself in every single position in the beginning. But in order for you to scale, you want and you need people and for you, I say ten to $20,000, once you get to $10,000 to $15,000 consistently per month, you want to, especially if you get to $20,000 consistently per month for three to four months, you want to bring on someone at least part-time. And then from there, you know, once you get to $50,000, you should have at least two people, uh, one person full-time, one person part-time, if not both people uh, full-time at that time because you can afford it. Anyways, you know, at $50,000 a month, you can definitely afford it. Outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What I want to do is below this video, there's a link that's going to take you to a short presentation that will explain to you exactly how PJK University can guide you through this entire process and really, you know, show you the systems on how you can find profitable products, how you can, you know, create listings, how you can delegate your business, how you can scale your business and how other students before you have gone through the same system and now are able to launch businesses that are five, six, even seven figures per year. Um, from the comfort of their home or traveling or doing whatever. So if you're interested, click the link below this video. Outside of that, thank you very much for joining us in this video. I will see you in the next video. Take care.